future is bright. While we have, of course, seen some pushbacks, I believe that there's a great thirst in society to really achieve gender equality. 25 years after the visionary Beijing platform of action on gender equality, we see progress, for example, in the areas of education and access to healthcare services. However, despite the progress made, women are still largely excluded in politics, policies and budgets. They do not lead a life free of violence, they earn less, and they take on two thirds of the non-paid care work in the household. What we see from the latest figures is that we are living in a world where women are squeezed into just 25%. One quarter of the space, both in physical decision-making rooms and in the stories that we tell about our lives. For example, 70% of parliamentarians are men. Only one quarter of women are parliamentarians. That's not enough. Only half is an equal share and only half is enough. This is the mission of Generation Equality, to change this trend. We do not need gradual improvements. I recall here the figures of 257 years to fully achieve gender equality if we continue at today's space, according to the Gender Gap Report of the World Economic Forum. We want to be able to say soon that countries have achieved gender equality. What we need is a real transformation that needs to include addressing social norms and gender stereotypes. One example, the EU-UN Spotlight Initiative, which aims for transformative change to end violence against women. We all really need to be impatient and join the movement for gender equality to ensure more stable and equal societies. I love the new IPFP Gender Initiative platform. You really provide an opportunity to discuss, to exchange, to drive the agenda forward on gender equality. And you will make a strong contribution like this on generation equality. Thank you for this initiative.